If you decide at some point that you're going to do a final mix in a big commercial studio, you're going to need to bounce your individual tracks. In some audio programs, this can take all day long soloing and exporting individual files. Fortunately, with Record, this is a painless process and you'll be done in minutes. Go to the File menu and select Bounce Mixer Channels. Just check the individual tracks you want to export. There's a button to check all if we want to export all the tracks. Next, we need to select the range of the song. This might be just a loop or the whole song. Make sure you set up the start and end markers or loop markers before selecting the option to make sure you're getting exactly what you want. Since in our example, we want to take our tracks to a studio for others to work on, we can leave it set to song, which goes from start marker to the end marker. The end marker is the one with the E on it. In the Bounce 2 section, we have a couple of choices. New Tracks in Song exports the tracks and re-imports them into the session. There's even an option to mute the original channels. Good options if we have a sound that we like that has a lot of effects on it and we're ready to commit to it and or our computer is low in resources. If you want to export all the audio to another directory, pick Audio Files on Disk. We recorded this to a fluctuating tempo. It's also a good idea to export the tempo track so we can import it into whatever DAW the commercial studio uses. That way, if there's any MIDI programming to be done, the grid will line up to the audio in no time. Up on the right, we have some mixer settings. If we're confident in our mix, we might pick All. This will export everything in stereo, and all the channel settings, including level and pan, will be included in each file. That way, a professional mixer will have a good idea of the mix we're starting to shoot for. If we liked our effects, but we know our level and panning have taken us down the wrong road, and we're looking for a fresh pair of ears to fix it, then consider using the All Except Fader section option, which excludes level and Finally, for really just tracking and record and plan to start the mixing process elsewhere, then pick None, and that will essentially give us the raw files with no EQ, dynamics, or other channel settings. This normalize function will normalize each file to 0 dB. As a rule of thumb for exporting mixes, I generally refrain from using this as we need to leave headroom for later processes. But it might come in handy, let's see a recording dialog for a website, and you want to ensure everything's at a consistent level. Use your best judgment. The last thing we need to consider is file type and bit depth. Choice of exporting to WAV or AIFF files at bit depths of 24 or 16 bit at a variety of different sample rates. Again, for exporting mixes for others to work on, I might suggest you use WAV format at 24 bit 44.1 kilohertz because that's the most common, most compatible format that leaves you at the right resolution if more work is needed in another studio. Notice that if we pick 16, we get the dither option, which actually adds low-level noise to the signal to prevent incomplete bits from being truncated when converting down from 24-bit to 16-bit. You'll notice this comes on by default, and indeed, if you're exploring to 16-bit, I recommend you leave this on. So that's exporting audio and record. If you want to learn how to export a final stereo mix, check out the final mix chapter.